Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be discussing the Rapid Fire Rogue build in Diablo 4. If you're looking for a build that snipes your foes from afar with a barrage of highly damaging arrows, then this build is for you. In this video, we're going to be going over the mechanics, character progression, and the playstyle of the Rapid Fire Rogue build. It's a really, really strong build, and I want to first start off by talking about the playstyle of the Rapid Fire Rogue build. This build is all about dealing effortless damage from a distance. You'll be spamming rapid fire forever by optimizing energy consumption and regain. Improved rapid fire costs 25 energy to cast, but returns 15 energy if it hits a vulnerable enemy. This means that rapid fire has a net cost of only 10 energy. Keep those arrows flying with the rapid fire rogue. So let's talk about some of these skills as well that we're going to be looking at today. So let's dive into the skill tree and talk about what abilities we're going to want to take to complete this rapid fire rogue build. So of course, we are going to take puncture, so throwing a blade a short distance and every third cast slows an enemy by 20% for 2 seconds. Critical strikes will always slow as well. So this is big because of the enhanced puncture that we're going to take. Gain 2 energy when puncture damages a crowd controlled enemy. So these work very, very well together and from there we are going to take our first core ability that is rapid fire this is going to be leveled up to about level five not right away by about level 10 you're going to want this one to level five because it's going to be your main damage dealer so let's just do that right now from there as well we also are going to be taking the enhanced rapid fire as well as the improved rapid fire so this is going to gain 15 energy per cast of rapid fire when it damages a vulnerable enemy it's going to be a very, very strong buff to rapid fire, and it's going to help us do a lot, a lot of damage. We are also going to come back here and buff up our basic skill. So we are going to want fundamental puncture. Puncture now throws three blades in a spread, dealing 35% of its space damage. Hitting an enemy with at least two blades at once makes them vulnerable for two seconds. So we're, so we're going to create a lot of vulnerability and slows with this build. So our first mobility skill that we're going to be taking or agility skill is definitely going to be dash. We've seen how useful dash is definitely at least in the early game and late game as well. Just getting around the map. It's so, so nice. And I think dungeons based on your level of skill, it's going to be useful as well. Obviously, if you're dying a lot, you can switch this out for something more defensive or more aggressive to do more damage. But I think realistically, we are going to want dash for a while. Rapid fire up to level five is about what you want as well. But I also want to talk about some of these skills down here in the trap tree. We have concealment, which is a very, very useful skill. We've talked about concealment in the past. Vanish from sight, gaining an advanced form of stealth for four seconds that will not be removed by taking damage. Concealment also makes you unstoppable and grants 25% movement speed. Also allows you to move freely through enemies for its duration. And that's exactly why we're going to take enhanced concealment. You gain 40 energy when you enter that concealment. So basically a huge buff to your energy pool. And then we're going to take countering concealment, which the skill that breaks concealment will always be granted or guaranteed a critical strike. From there, we're going to go down to the exploit and we're going to level it to level two. So exploits one that a lot of people are not using in their build and they should be. You deal 6% increased damage to healthy and injured enemies. So let's level that to level 2 right off the bat and get our 12%. Here we are going to go down to the shadow imbuement of course. This is definitely the best rogue ability when it comes to imbuement. Um, we're going to level this up and we're also going to take enhanced shadow imbuement. And then we're going to take the blended shadow imbuement. Which basically that allows us to have a primary explosion making enemies vulnerable for two seconds. Again, vulnerability, crowd control, it's something that we're going to continue to utilize with this build. From there, we are also going to take the imbuement of Shadow Crash. So Shadow Damage has up to 10% chance to stun, and that's going to be huge. It's going to be only 0.5 seconds, but it's going to be crowd control, and that's why we're also going to level it to rank 2 and then rank 3 to get that 1.5 second stun. Reign of Arrows is going to be the next thing we're going to be taking a look at. So let's go back up to the primary skills or the important skills that we're going to want to take a look at. So we're going to want to also take Shadow Crash and then take three pips into the Consuming Shadows. Shadow Crash is going to give us a stun for about 0.5 seconds or a 10% chance to stun for about 0.5 seconds. But the big one, Consuming Shadows, each time you kill an enemy with Shadow Damage, you generate 30 energy. Again, 
This build's all about generating quick energy, so you can always use that energy to really lay down the damage. And that's where our next ability comes in. If we take a look at our ultimate skill, you guys guessed it, it's going to be Rain of Arrows. Arrows rain down over a large area two times, each wave dealing 100% damage. We're going to definitely take this and its buffs as well, its ultimate buff. So, imbuement skill effects applied by Rain of Arrows have 20% increased potency, and of course, Rain of Arrows' second wave knocks down enemies for three seconds. A very strong ultimate when put together with this build, and that's exactly why you are going to do a lot of damage, and this is about level 25 that you're going to be hitting with these specific skill points. If you are leveling higher than 25 at this point, you are going to want to start pipping up some of these even more. And you can come over here to things like exploit, take this up to 18%. You can come down to malice. And if you are going above level 25 at this current point, then you can just start taking things like exploit up to level three. You can start going over to things like dash and you can take the enhanced dash so you can get that critical strike damage for that five second duration. And you can also deal more damage to crowd control enemies with dash reduces its charge cooldown by 0.5 seconds up to three seconds per cast. It's very useful. Or you could go with the slow discipline dash as well. But basically there's a lot of options from here. This is just going to be your base build that you can continually buff over time. And you can also take, again, your one of your basic skills, puncture, you wanted to you could take that to rank five but realistically we are going to continue to use rain of arrows and rapid fire so much with the constant energy restoration now let's talk about some of the aoe damage rotation of course shadow imbuement is going to be activated at the start of this aoe damage rotation we're going to dash through the bulk density of mobs infecting as many as possible and then we're going to activate concealment to guarantee the next critical hit we're going to cast Rain of Arrows if it's a tougher group of mobs, spam that Rapid Fire to kill the infected enemies and explode them, and use Puncture to generate energy and reapply vulnerability when needed. We're also going to have a single target damage rotation that really starts with casting Puncture close enough to the target to hit twice, applying that vulnerability. If not on cooldown, activate Concealment to guarantee you the next critical hit. If not on cooldown, activate Shadow Imbuement. And then cast rapid fire two to three times depending on attack speed when the target is vulnerable. When vulnerable status falls off, you just repeat that rotation. It's a very, very strong rotation that works very, very well. I also want to quickly talk about some of the legendary aspects you're going to want for this build. Of course, you're going to want Edge Master, Repeating, Quickening Fog, Shadow Slicer, Ravenous, Opportunist, Unstable Imbuements, Synergy, Expectant, Corruption, Surprise, Rapid, Wind Striker, Ghost Walker, Might, Disobedience, Eluding, Escape Artist, Arrow Storms. These are just a few of the ones that will work well with this build. So definitely keep an eye out for those specific legendary aspects in the game. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. See you guys all in the next one.